You may be seated. Well, this is the part of the service that uh, where believers celebrate the Lord's Supper together. And we are called to remember that Jesus, of what Jesus did on the cross for those who belong to him. As we meditate on Jesus' death and resurrection, please remember that the wafers and the juice symbolize the breaking of Christ's body and the pouring out of his blood for us. This is a special time for believers. We are here to remember and worship our God. Our scripture for this morning is John 20, verses 30 and 31. We want to read these together, so if you don't have a Bible, please raise your hand. There are some men that uh, will present those Bibles to you, and if you don't own a Bible, please take this one with you. It's a gift from us. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of grace. We know that it is truly a gift because we could do nothing to earn it. We could do nothing to beg for it, work for it. Um, it is truly a gift of you, and it is through Jesus' death and resurrection that believing in him that we have the gift of grace, and we thank you for that. It's in your name we pray. Amen. So John 20, verses 30 and 31. These two verses tell us why John wrote this gospel. Therefore, many other signs Jesus also performed in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these have been written so that you may believe that Je Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. The book of John has a very special place in my heart. In 1997, uh, shortly after Barb and I were saved, the year before my dad passed away, my parents uh, visited us from uh, South Dakota. Barb gave my parents cassette tapes that were of the Gospel of John. And for some of you, you probably don't know what a cassette tape is, but that's how we used to listen to uh, sermons and scripture. So, um, but that was back in the day. So when we got home, my dad listened to them, all of them. And my mom told us that on the phone that he actually, actually listened to them twice, twice through the Gospel of John. We were shocked. This is a man that knew very little to nothing about Jesus, but he was fascinated with his truth. When they came out to visit again, we noticed a real softening in my dad. He was clearly different. For the first time in my life, he told me that he loved me. And we could clearly see that most of his rough edges were gone. My younger sister had even shared before they got there that he had told her that he loved her also. She said, Dad is so different. He has changed. He passed away shortly after that, and now we have the hope that he was saved by the grace of God through listening to the gospel that was presented by the Apostle John. This was a perfect book for my dad to go through because John clearly states Jesus is God's anointed Messiah, the only Savior, the Christ and that in believing, you may have life in his name. John includes eyewitness testimony and included miracles that testify Jesus is the Son of God. One, one author says this, John is saying throughout this gospel that there is no other name by which you can be saved from sin and eternal judgment. There is no other redeemer. There is no other way to God. There is no other door to heaven. There is no other one to reconcile us to God. Only Jesus. 
He is the only savior, the only source of escape from judgment, and the only way to eternal life. Back to verse 30. Therefore, many other signs Jesus also performed in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. So what is the purpose of a sign? The Greek word for sign is simeon, which means it's a miracle or a token, a sign or a wonder. A sign is to give a direction, to point you toward something. And when you see a sign, more than likely, you're not at your destination yet. John is using signs or miracles to point us to who Jesus is. John continues in verse 31, but these, referring to the miracles John speaks of, these have been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Verse 31 tells us why the Gospel of John was written. He says that not all signs and miracles performed in the presence of the disciples were noted in this book, but the ones written will give evidence that Jesus is the Son of God. He is the Christ. John makes it very clear throughout this gospel that there is no other name by which you can be saved from sin and judgment. The world will tell you there are many avenues to God. But Jesus tells us in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. Only Jesus is our Savior. Only he can redeem us from our sinful past and our present and our future. He is the God incarnate. He came as a perfect spotless lamb of as the perfect spotless lamb of god who takes away sins he came to suffer and die in the place of those who believe in his name john 1 12 and 13 says but as many as received him to to them he gave the right to become children of god even to those who believe in his name who were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. You must be born of God. What does Jesus want us to see in this? He wants, to, he wants us to see that the destination or the goal is eternal life and only is available in Christ, only available those who believe in him, because they have seen the evidence that he is who he says he is, the Messiah, the Son of God. John, under the direction of the Holy Spirit, writes in verse 31, these signs have been written that you may believe. We haven't seen the risen Christ, but we've experienced his power and his presence in our lives. 1 Peter 1, verses 8 and 9 says, And though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you have not seen him now, or you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. If you're here today, and you, not had, you have not placed your faith in Jesus, his death, and his rec- resurrection, we want you to know that today you can do that. You can right now turn from your sin and turn to him, turn to God. This may be your only opportunity. It may not come around again. 2 Corinthians 6, 2 says, Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Please, seriously consider what you have heard this morning about Jesus being your only hope of getting to heaven. 
I urge you to talk to one of the elders, or there will be someone up here to your left, to my right. After the service, any of us would love to discuss with you what it means to have a relationship with Christ. But if you choose to not turn from your sin, to stay where you're at, please allow the elements to pass you by as we take communion this morning. Men, please come in service. Believers, please use this time to examine your hearts and meditate on the promises of what it means to be one who is beloved by God. Rejoice in your Savior. Dwell on his kindness in saving your soul and acknowledge any unconfessed sin. You may take communion on your own when you're ready. <laughs> 